Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about customers and how we can help them. So when we think about our product, we really need to be very clear about the pains that the customers are having and how they will resolve it with our services or our product. So be very specific on pains and gains and what customers need to do. Um, the additional video is attached here below. Um, so in your spare time, please look over that. Uh, let's hop over to the customer segmentation and how you do that and um, other uh, pieces that you will need to fill out for business model canvas. So when it comes to Customer segments, um, the building block defines the different groups of people uh, or organizations and enterprise aims to reach and serve. So there's different types of uh, segments, segmentation. Uh, the first one is mass market. So business model models focused on mass market don't distinguish between different customer segments. So it's so big, it's kind of like Walmart. The value proposition, distribution channels, and customer relationships all focus on one large group of customers with broadly similar needs and problems. This type of business model is often found in the consumer electronics sector. Um, so like Samsung um, or something like that, super mass market. Okay, so what about niche market? Niche market, uh, business models targeting niche markets cater to specific specialized customer segments. The value proposition, distribution channels, and customer relationships are all tailored to the specific requirements of a niche market. Such business models are often found in supplier-buyer relationships. Some business models distinguish between market segments with slightly different needs and problems. The retail aim um, the retail arm of a bank like Credit Suisse, uh, for example, may distinguish between a large group of customers, each possessing asset of up to $100,000, and a smaller group um, of affluent clients, each of whose net worth is $500,000. Um, so that's the example of this segmentation within the uh, customers that you will have. Um, okay, so the diversified. An organization uh, with a diversified customer business model serves two unrelated customer segments with very different needs and problems. For example, in 2006, uh, Amazon.com decided to diversify its retail business by selling cloud computing services. So they have AWS as a cloud computing services and Amazon as like selling um retail and like different goods online, so e-commerce. All right, next one is multi-sided platforms or multi-sided markets. Some organizations serve two or more uh, interdependent customer segments. A credit card company, for example, needs a large base of credit card holders and a large base of merchants who accept those credit cards. Similarly, an enterprise offering a free newspaper needs a large read base to attract advertisers um, right so on the other hand it also needs advertisers um, to finance production and distribution both segments are required to make the business model work so it's a user and it's a uh, so it's b2c on one hand and b2b on the other hand that you uh, have that's multi-sided platforms all right the following part that we want to go over is um, value proposition. So what is it about this product that is different and like why choose this one, right? One is newness. So it's um, usually technology related. So for example, everything that is related to VR right now is newness. It's a, uh, it's, or cryptocurrency. This is like new and innovative, and um, this is going to be your value proposition, the newness. Uh, there's also performance, so you can have several value propositions for one product. Uh, improving product or service performance has traditionally been a common way to create value. So the PC sector has traditionally uh, relied on this factor by uh, bringing more powerful machines to market. Customization. So that's a third option uh, for value proposition, or maybe we 
all three in one product. Um, tailoring products and services uh, to the specific needs of individual uh, customers or customer segments creates value. In recent years, the concept of mass customization and customer co-creation have gained importance. Um, so this approach allows for customized uh, products and services while still taking advantage of economic economies of scale. All right, so uh, for example, if you're talking about uh, online course, it could be for the same for everybody um, as a product, as a service, but it could be also a very customized per business um, unit. The next one is getting the job done. It's pretty much uh, you know that like your company, your business uh, is serving specific um, need. For example, Rolls-Royce understands uh, this very well. Uh, its airline customers rely entirely on Rolls-Royce to manufacture and service their jet engines. This arrangement allows customers to focus on running their airlines. In return, the airlines pay Rolls-Royce a fee for every hour an engine runs. So that's that's crazy good. Basically, you're not the customer facing product necessarily, but you are uh, one of those pieces that you know that product cannot live without. Like for example, it's chips for machines um, and things of that nature. This, this is called getting the job done. So, so that's the value proposition. The next one is design. Um, design is an important but difficult element to measure. A product may stand out because of superior design. In the fashion and consumer electronics industries, design can be a particularly important part of the value proposition. So Apple will have a really good design um, for like their phones and other products. And that is one of the alluring things that, um, you know, bring us to that brand. So brand and status. The other side of Apple, for example, is that it used to be uh, seen as like, oh, well, it's it's expensive and it's um, a status thing as well. Um, customers may find value in the simple act of using a displaying specific brand. It also um, pertains like Rolex or if we're talking about uh, all super expensive bags for women, uh, you just show off your wealth or status, right? Um, it's not only the quality of the product itself that you're paying for. Price. Offering similar value at a lower price is a common way to satisfy the needs um, of price-sensitive customer segments. By low price value proposition, um, have important implications for the rest of a business model. Um, so, for example, if we're talking about Walmart, you know that your the prices there will be lower than in other stores. Um, or if you're talking about Southwest, it's going to be cheaper tickets, presumably. Uh, but you also have the lower expectations of the quality, right? Um, or like extra services. So price is usually mm, very popular business value. Um, cost reduction. Helping customers reduce costs um, is an important way to create value. Salesforce.com, for example, sells a hosted customer relationship management uh, application, so CRM. This um, relieves buyers from the expense and trouble of having to buy, install, and manage CRM software themselves. So when you think about business value model, I can tell, oh, um, value proposition, I'm sorry. Um, I can tell you that cost reduction and um, getting the job done will be probably going together most of the times. Uh, risk reduction. Customers value reducing the risks um, they incur when purchasing products or services. For a user, uh, for a used car buyer, a one-year service guarantee reduces the risk of post-purchase breakdowns and repairs. A service level guarantee partially reduces the risk undertaken uh, by a purchaser of outsourced IT services. Accessibility, making products and services available to customers who previously lacked access to them is another way to create value. Uh, so for example, Net NetJet, for instance, popularized, popularized the concept of fractional private jet ownership. 
Um, okay, so next one is convenience and usability. Making things more convenient or easier to use can create substantial value. So iPod, iTunes, that will be your great example. Um, so to kind of summarize for value proposition, there are some um, options that will go together and some that um, are going against each other. For example, if it's a brand and status, it oftentimes will not go with like price. It will not be, oh, it's lower price, but it's a really cool brand, right? Um, it's usually, but you can have a product that is a platform that will be uh, covering the convenience and usability, the accessibility. It will have the risk reduction and cost reduction. It will, it might have the price. Um, it might have the design. And so all those different things might be in w one product. And those are different value propositions that um, it has. All right. The other thing thing on this slide that we want to go over is um, key activities, production, problem solving, or platform uh, or network. Like what is your product about, right? Um, so that is quickly, quickly. Okay, so customer segmentation, that's a good one. Um, so let's go over Customer relationships are going to be our next. Okay, so next one is cost structure. So some products are, or services are cost driven, value driven, fixed cost, variable costs, economies of scale, and economies of scope. All right, so cost driven business model focuses on minimizing costs wherever possible. This approach aims at creating and maintaining the leanest possible cost structure using low price value proposition. Um, so again, that's Walmart for you, for example. Value driven. Some companies are less concerned with the cost implications of a particular business model design and instead focus on value creation, premium value proposition. So when we're talking about um, luxury hotels uh, with their lavish facilities and exclusive exclusive services fall into this category. So anything that is premium will be value driven. Um, variable cost, um, costs that vary proportionally with the volume of goods or services uh, produced. For example, some businesses such as music festivals are characterized by a high proportion of variable costs. Uh, fixed costs. Costs that remain the same despite the volume of goods or services produced. Uh, examples include salaries, rent, and physical manufacturing fa facilities. Uh, okay, so then the next one is economies of scope. Cost advantages that a business enjoys due to a larger scope of operations. Uh, in a large enterprise, for example, the same marketing activities or distribution channels may support multiple products. Economies of scale, cost advantages that a business enjoys as its output expands. Larger companies, for instance, benefit from lower bulk purchase rates. This and other factors cause average cost per unit to fall as output rises. So economies of scale and variable costs are very similar in a way, but also different. So for example, when you think about variable costs, if you are owning um, a co-working space or something that requires physical space, there is a limit uh, to how many people you can fit there. So then you will um, uh, calculate the cost per person, right? Uh, at the same time, if you were to create a virtual co-working space, there's no limit to the number of people you can add, right? You can have hundreds and thousands of people join your online course or whatnot. So that is economies of scale. Hope that explains it. 
All right, what else have we not gone through? Key partnerships. All right, so. Um, there are four different types of partnerships. Strategic alliances between non-competitors, co-opetition, co I think I wrote, yes, um, not cooperation, but co-petition, um, strategic partnerships between competitors, then joint ventures to develop new businesses and buyer-supplier relationships to uh, assure reliable supplies. There are three main key activities for a product or service that you will have, production, these activities relate to designing, making, and delivering a product in substantial, substantial quantities. Production activity dominates the business model of manufacturing firms. Problem solving key activities of this type relate to coming up with new solutions to individual customer problems. The operations of uh, consultancies, hospitals, and other services organizations are typically dominated by problem solving activities. And then platform slash network. Business models designed with a platform as a key resource are dominated by platforms or networking, network related key activities. Network, uh, matchmaking platforms, software, and even brands can function as a platform. So eBay, for example, or a few other companies as an example. Um, okay, so key resources i think we've gone through main things that you need to have here um let us go over the customer relationships so there are several personal assistance this relationship is based on human interaction the customer can communicate with a real customer representative to get uh, help during the sales process or uh, um, after the purchase is complete so a product might have different um, relationships. So if you have in your product uh, like a virtual chat or if you have a customer service um, representatives, you should add personal assistance. Uh, dedicated personal assistance, that is like higher level usually for um, more premium products. This relationship involves dedicated uh, dedicating a customer representative specifically to an individual client. Think about um, some investment banks um, or think about real estate agents. I will be dedicated personal assistant. Self-service. In this type of relationship, um, a company maintains no direct relationship with customer. So customer can do their own help um, and they can find it on their platform or whatnot. Automated services, this type of relationship mixes a more sophisticated form of customer self-service with automated process. So um, think about, again, a virtual um, chat bot. In the beginning, you can respond to like automatic questions to figure out what kind of problem you have, but then it escalates to an actual human who will help you out to resolve the problem if a bot didn't help. So that's automated services. Communities. Increasingly, uh, companies are utilizing user communities to become more involved with customer and prospects and to facilitate connections between community members. Many companies maintain online communities that allow users to exchange knowledge and solve each other's problem. So that's, for example, Xbox has a gig uh, economy, which is uh, a person who is an expert in the product um, will not be working for Xbox, but they will be um, kind of freelancing and giving their own help and advice um, and sharing the knowledge about the product uh, via chat and solving their problem. Co-creation. More companies are going beyond the traditional customer vendor relationship to co-create value with customers. Amazon.com invites customers to write reviews and thus create value for other book lovers. Not only book lovers, but 
uh, other product lovers. Um, others such as uh, YouTube.com solicit customers to create content for public consumption. All right, so hopefully that helps to kind of cover the customer relationship. Revenue streams, okay, very important um, topic to have. So let's cover that. All right, what about rev revenue streams? The revenue streams building block represents the cash and company generates from each customer segment. A business model can involve two different types of revenue streams. One is transaction revenues resulting from one-time customer payments. And the second one is recurring revenues resulting from ongoing payments to either deliver uh, a value proposition to customers or provide post-purchase customer support. Okay, so asset sale. That is your usual selling ownership rights to a physical product. For example, um, you are selling your house and you are done, right? Um, or usage fee, use of a particular service. Um, so just like this revenue stream is generated by the use of a particular service. The more a service is used, the more the customer pays. So telecom, um, hotel charges for per day, a phone will be, phone service might be um, charging for the like gigabytes of data that you're used per month, stuff like that. Um, subscription fees, um, kind of a no-brainer, you pay per month a subscription fee. Lending, renting, and leasing. So that is um, for a specific period of time, you are uh, giving away the rights to use it um, for a fee. Uh, licensing. So this revenue stream is generated by giving customers permission to use protected intellectual property in exchange for licensing fees. All right, so that should be explaining it. Um, some services and some products have the patents, so you would need to pay a company to use uh, their intellectual property. Um, brokerage fees. This revenue stream uh, derives from intermediation services performed on behalf of two or more parties. So credit card providers, for example, earn revenues by taking a percentage of the value of each sale transaction executed between credit card merchants and customers. Advertising. This revenue stream results from fees for advertising a particular product, service, or brand. Traditionally, the media industry and Event organizers relied heavily on revenues from advertising. But recently, in, including software and services, have started relying more heavily on advertising revenues. All right. So we've gone through um, the revenue stream. All right. The last slide is about the channels. There's different channel types. Um, some you own, some you partner with, and there's five phases of uh, the channel type. So there's awareness, evaluation, purchase, delivery, and after sales. Um, first answers the question, how do we raise awareness about our company's products and services? What are the ways that they learn about us? The second one is evaluation. Uh, when they evaluate whether to use our services, like how do we help customers evaluate our organization's value proposition? Um, if they're on the purchasing um, step, how do we allow customers to purchase specific products and services? Like, is it easy for them to buy your product or service? And then delivery, how do we deliver a value proposition to customers. 
so is the process of like them loading um, an ebook uh, is it easy and simple or um, is the shipping two three business days or does it take actually a month to get something and then after sales how do we provide post-purchase customer support so those are the questions to ask and to describe what your plan is.